All right, mates, part two. Hope you caught part one. Just kind of like a brief, like, little thing about what Lake Anna, about Lake Anna is all about. Hey, first off, I want to thank uh, Phantom Outdoors. I want to thank Rugged Road. Um, also, want to thank P-Line. Um, I got some new line um, from P-Line. Totally love P-Line. Um, highly recommend it. Also, Purple Line Coffee. Check it out. They're on Instagram. Um, and I got some custom baits that... Had an opportunity to get out on a different body of water with Lake Anna being different, fishing different than up here and fishing different than the rivers. The rivers are completely still washed out. They're they're about halfway back from crest. I think it crested at 18.7 upper Potomac. Um, I think it's down to like seven and a half or to nine in a lot of sections. So, I mean, that hasn't really come back yet. So it's a perfect opportunity, you know, to take up some mates on opportunities um, to fish some of the lakes. Um, and so it was great. To me, as I said before in part one, Lake Anna reminds me, or Lake Murray reminds me of Lake Anna, or Lake Anna reminds me of Lake Murray, depending on what um, where I've been, because I've lived in both Virginia and South Carolina. So, so it, you know, I'm kind of bipolar when it comes to that. They, they basically just set up and remind me the same way, and I fish them the same way. So I'm fishing shallow this time of year because of what's happening, not only with the actual um, largemouth bass spawn, um, but also, that's where a lot of the forage tends to be. And again, we talked about it. Gizzard shad, threadfin shad, blueback sharing, but also crappy the pant and bluegill. Crappy and bluegill, black crappy. Um, and so knowing that and knowing what the fish are actually using your surveys, using what information you have, looking backward, okay? You know that they're feeding up the primary during spring this time of year before spawns, okay? of of um forage species the primary food is still bluegill crappy okay followed by shad okay so you look at it from that respect and one of the first baits was simply lipless crankbait you know that guy's plot crappy pattern okay um but again you have to throw your um your strengths and what your preferences are. Me, I'm curious. I like lipless crankbait this time of year. I like it all the time. But you know, it's it's interesting to see how that when you're shallower um can work. Um, you know, even with limited grass or no grass, depending on where you are. Um, you're also not gonna get away, you you can't get away without on Lake Anna throwing the spinnerbait. Okay, this one mirrors the blue black herring. These are easy to do. You can talk to your custom guy, but these are easier to do. You can you can seal and then spray your blades if you want to um, color your blades, pop change out. You can get a spinner bait with a white head or even a shad type head, um, and then change the skirt out. You can a living rubber, any kind of like skirt. You can change the skirt out to try and get to that. You can also paint your own skirt. Okay. Um, in terms of if you get a white skirt, you can kind of add some coloration to it. Okay. Um, neat little tricks about that. I'll cover in some videos, um, coming up that you can do. Um, you can utilize that. So don't skimp on a spinner bait on Lake Anna right now. Okay. I'm just going to lay that out there. I'm not going to live on any secrets for those people that are fishing. I'm not going to spot drop or any of that because of the tournament coming up, um, in a few weeks. Um, and I promise um guys in that tournament that I was fishing with that I would not um and so I'm going to talk about the custom baits because that's kind of what I do um don't sleep on yes the old buzz bait don't sleep on it I'm telling you don't go away but I know a lot of you will and a lot of you will leave it and not use it and go to a chatter bait maybe that um don't sleep on that don't sleep on the frog just saying but if you're going to go, go to a smaller one, okay? Go to a smaller one. Trust me. Go to a smaller one. Smaller profile. Um, white worked fantastic. But you can also use some shad colors, some colorations, some darker cones, colorations. Um, now, deeper offshore, deeper bite, transitioning bite, all of that good mess. You're going to be a little deeper in water. But you still want to mimic the forage. You guys know I'm going to pick up the bait. You guys know. I, I, I think I've painted probably a dozen of these. Maybe more. Since uh, Murray event. Um, love it. 
Got some more of these coming in in order to get painted, okay, just because of the depth. But it mirrors that coloration, okay? You've got that option. And then, remember shads, the different kinds of shads, okay? Another option that works. Soft plastic-wise, again, you're going to go more towards Threadfin Shad, Gizzard Shad, Shad-like renditions, okay? Again, Paddle tail swim bait. Love the coloration on this. This is outside within the baits. Love the product. Light, love the red eye as well, too, for me. And then same, but mirror blueback herring, right? Depending on what time you're out there in the next few weeks, okay, what's going to be happening, okay? Um, I still think the shallow bite is it from, for right now, but it's happening. Starting to boom. Is You can do this one. Love the color of that. This one's great in the water. Great shine in the water too as well. Um, another one that's that's absolutely um, phenomenal. Now, smaller. And I was I, the last two, these two right here, for me, were a lot more effective in deeper water. What I mean by deeper water, I mean eight feet or more, okay? And obviously, again, it gets deep, 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 okay? But I mean eight feet or more. Shallower than that, these were the two that were effective for me, okay? Shad-like, blueback herring-like, okay? Smaller swim baits, still highly effective. Now, for the big boys out there, and I'm not one of them, because I just have not been able to master it yet. It's just a work in progress for me. Um, are those guys that, and so you have to see it to believe it. You know, when a guy lands a three, four, five pound largemouth bass on Lake Anna on a glide bait or swim bait that's like 10 inches, you just have to see it to believe it. You just don't, some of us, I just can't get that into my head that, you know, and that, and that goes for like maybe finishing off a bag. Mind you, bags on Lake Anna are now close to 25 pound bags, okay? 20 to 25 pound bags. Some have said that there have been bags closer to 30. I, I mean, so, and I can believe it after being out. I can believe it. I just can't. So for me, it's like, I, I don't know if you're a tournament angler, do you fish your finesse presentations? Do you fish, do you power fish? And then finishing, you've got five in the boat and to get that kicker fish, finish it off. You then switch to larger size swim baits. Okay. For that big bite going after that big bite. Okay. You know, it's just not something that's been successful for me. But, I mean, I'm, I've am i seen guys just saw it happen. Like, boom, boom. And I'm like, I, and so it's just an area of opportunity for me in terms of developing that, um, you know, that strength over time and confidence that I just don't have in, you know, larger format, eight inches or higher plastic paddle tail swim baits or glide baits or swim baits that are 10 inches or more. Um that but it, 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 it I mean it's a strategy for sure I can see that working for after you've gotten your five to where you're going for a big bigger big bite um again offshore um clearly I think it, it, it is is that area of opportunity there um one of the other ones for me again so much of it's like confidence we all have confidence is I like jigs okay I you know, it's just a product of being my age, I think, and growing up in that time frame where, where you know, Woo Dave's worm fishing and the jig fishing kind of like were like, you know, from like 80 to like 95, 15-year period um, um, before all this other stuff's happened after that period that has been, for me, over time, that I just feel more confident with it. And, and this is a line that I actually really, really like as well. It's been highly effective for me. Doesn't matter whether I'm on a lake or a river. And a lot of it has to do with it's got that, you can see that extra hook there, trailer hook. It's been painted to match the you know, the thump here. You can adjust it however high you want this, lower or higher, all the way up the hook. It's got the rattle. You can see the rattle in there. And it's got a really, really great going. And and the 
I have this probably done up in eight different colors. Um, and so, again, these are the baits primarily for me that, you know, I wanted to get out on the water, custom baits, compare them to what the other guys were fishing that day, talking with other people about what, what their catches was. You got to remember, um, a lot of stripe, a lot of bass, there's a lot of bass fishing there, um, not just for largemouth, um, but for stripers and all of that. And you're going to run into that when you're fishing, if you're fishing for bet, you're going to run into that, um, especially offshore for sure. Um, and so it's just a matter of tweaking those presentations down and, and, and fishing, um, you know, to your strengths, I guess, and to, you know, but also on days, pre-fishing days, fish a little bit different, go out of your comfort zone, see if you can't get on something or find something. That's what happened, to, you know, with me, you know, fishing with someone throwing completely different baits um, to kind of see, you know, and fishing behind them. It's something I really like to do. I know a lot of people have angst on it. I don't mind being a co-angler. I don't mind being a non-boater. I don't mind. I like to, it doesn't bother me one bit to be on the back deck fishing behind someone who's power fishing, fishing by, it doesn't, you know, it's just actually, I love that. I mean, if I was, if I was to, you know, enter in a tournament, um, coming up this summer or, you know, on, on a lot of our bodies of water up here, um, and I had to get paired with a boater, um, for that, if I wasn't entering in as a boater, but entering in as, as a co-angler, I would hope I got paired or I would do my best to get paired with someone who power fishes. Okay, that's just because I just had the best success with that fishing behind them. All right, so hope you guys enjoy this. Check out the Facebook page. It's up in the description here on Instagram. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit more deeper dive into breaking down the forage, the aquatic vegetation, um, ramps and such for Lake Anna for anyone wanting to come to Virginia. If you're coming to Virginia, hit me up. Let me know you're coming and uh, we'll see if we can go out fishing together. All right, mates.